Ready to get started here from Alumni Hall. You'll see the champion in action in just a few moments. Finding. Welcome back to the Boxing Benefit for Holy Angels Church. Dan Roan and Ben Bentley at DePaul's Alumni Hall, where a good crowd is gathered in anticipation of watching the world heavyweight champion at work, and here he is entering the ring. There he is, and he, uh, he's got a tremendous ovation. And he also has an entourage, Alexa, which I've never seen. He is really surrounded by uh, trainers, managers, security people. But both are in the ring, Dan, and this is what counts. There's Quick Tillis taking the normal bows. And we'll go up to the announcer now. Four rounds of boxing. First of all, in the red corner, he is fighting out of Tulsa, Oklahoma. He weighs 219 pounds, a professional record of 38, 13, and 1, and one of only two individuals ever to go the distance with a reigning Heavyweight champion, ladies and gentlemen, James Quick Tillis. Quick Tillis, who has gone the full 10 with Mike Tyson in his career and who now is a In the blue corner. Mike. And now the he champion. He is fighting out of Brooklyn, New York. He weighs 222 pounds. He is dressed in black. And ladies and gentlemen, he is the undisputed and undefeated heavyweight champion of the world if you want a Chicago welcome, Mike Tyson. Well, Tyson has just been introduced, and he has a standing ovation. And uh, both are wearing headgears. Both will be carrying 16-ounce gloves. And I'm surprised that Flip uh, Tillis did not put his shirt on. Well, Tyson's dressed in his customary black, as usual, has no socks on, just the black boxing shoes. And this will be a four-rounder. Now you can notice right now the way Tyson wastes no time. You know, somebody said the 16-ounce gloves can you hurt somebody, can you knock them out? Yes, I've seen it done. Of course, with headgear, it'd be very difficult to do that, but well, uh, that's not the intent tonight anyway. People want to see Mike Tyson in action, and they're probably going to get the full four rounds. Well, Dan, what you're looking at right now, they're not clowning around just for the benefit of the fans here. They're not showing them, well, here we are, we'll take it easy. They're out there winging. I think uh, anytime Mike Tyson steps underneath those ropes, he's out there for business. I don't think he touches around very much very often in the ring. Dan, you're right, he's doing it right now. Tyson in black, Tillis there on the right. First round action. You know, uh, Tillis is saying this is where it all started for me. I want to make a big hit. I want to come back to Chicago as a headliner again. For a while, he was going great guns. Oh, he really was. It knocked out virtually everyone wow. he fought and was undefeated when Mike Weaver beat him back in 81 out of the Rosemont right. right. Horizon. Tyson is just warming up a little bit, you see, and uh, it really does not, does not, I, I'll emphasize that, try to hurt Quick Tillis. If he were my sparring partner, I don't think I'd want to hurt him either, you know, it, no. can't, it can't be easy to find guys that want to step in the That's ring and right. practice with Mike Tyson. Well, then you know that he's got a fight coming up, he, Tyson, with former heavyweight champion Larry Hall. Hey, look at that, man. Pretty good combination there by Tyson. Yeah. We have watched several preliminary fights, Ben, you and I tonight. Uh, some smaller guys who are very quick, and, you know, it's almost incredible that Mike Tyson, who outweighs some of those people by 80 pounds, is just as quick, if not quicker, than they are. I'm glad you noticed that. i tell you what uh, Tyson has done. He slowed Quick Tillis down a little bit. See, they're not playing around. This is not the... Uh, let's play twinkle toes. Dug one to the body and then right back up to the jaw to Tyson. And you look through the crowd and you watch all the folks. Nobody's eyes are turned away from this. This is the first time that they've seen the Mike Tyson. And boy, they are eating it up. Counting down to the end of the first round. Again, this is scheduled for four. An exhibition, there'll be no decision at the end. 
There's one. Yeah, well, you know, as you look at him, Dan, I feel that as great as he is, Tyson, he needs a lot of work. He certainly needs a lot of work yet. Well, you've been around boxing for years and years, and you saw some of the greatest heavyweights in history come through Chicago. Right. Guys like Marciano and the Who like. Who fought here in Chicago. How would, uh, in your opinion, this guy compare to some of those people? Well, I'll be very honest with you. I still think, uh, as, as I said earlier, he needs a lot of work. I don't think he would have fared well with a Joe Lewis. I don't think uh, a Mar that he, the Marciano would have had trouble with him. Uh, he's got, he's, he's still got a long ways to go. Good fighter, real, real good fighter. Again, I say nobody around to challenge him, but I think that uh, some of the other fighters that I had seen, the great heavyweights, uh, he needs a lot of work yet. Well, we'll keep in mind that he's only 21 years old and fighting in an era in which there aren't that many great heavyweights to, to go up against. I mean, it's I tough to learn when you're 21 and there's nobody out there to fight. I keep telling you, Dan, that there's nobody around that could get the crowd excited. In other words, if you were talking, say, well, well, after he fights so and so, you know who I'd like to see him fight? I'd like to see him fight this fella or that fella. <laughs> but there's nobody around. Well, he's got Larry Holmes coming up in January. Yes. And uh, later on down the road, probably not until early 89, Michael Spinks, which is one that a lot of people are looking forward to. I hope that fight comes off. There seems to be a little controversy about that. Well, I think there's too much money to be made in that one for it not to happen sometime. Too much money. Tonight, they're fighting their hearts out for just expenses. And they're not even paying that. I understand they paid their own way in. They're paying their own hotel. And incidentally, the officials here tonight are not getting paid. The referee, the announcer, and the judges. The Holy Angels has yet a long road to hoe. They need somewhere in the neighborhood of three and a half to four million dollars to rebuild the church that burned to the ground. And as of now, Father Clemens says uh, they're in the neighborhood of a million. So there's two and a half or three to go. And this may pay some of the freight. As we said, a good crowd here to watch the world heavyweight champion, Mike Tyson, and Foot Tillis. Just past the midway point of round two. Now you see why he, Mike Tyson, wants a quick Tillis in camp with him. And you see, I mean, there's no playing around. I'm not taking it easy. You're not taking They're out there really punching and winning. There's the shuffle, the old Ali shuffle. <laughs> Good oh. body with two. Oh, we right hear. hands to the body. Hear it down here, Dan. Oh, they're getting them out. And incidentally, the promoter, Ernie Terrell, who worked with Father Clement, put together a great show. A lot of good talent on the card. We'll be seeing some more of that talent later on in the show. Craig Bojanowski will yes. fight Al Houck, and uh, we'll look forward to that one. It should be fun. Tyson with a good combination. Tyson's throwing most of the leather here, Ben. I don't yes, think Tillis is getting off very well. Well, that's why... Uh, that's why he's the sparring <laughs> partner, huh? <laughs> that's what I was just going to say. <laughs> But I tell you, he's not, he's not leaning over the champion. He's not, he's not trying to uh, stop from getting tired. And uh, this is, for an exhibition, this is as good as you'll see anywhere. Mike Tyson, 21 years old, Brooklyn, New York. A troubled youth. And then, you know, or knew, I should say, custom auto very well. Yes, I did. And their story is a very heartwarming one. Now, Tyson was headed for serious trouble. That's right. And uh, Cust pulled him out of it, turned him around, and uh, I know, although he's not here now, he'd be very proud of uh, the he way sure Mike Tyson was. has turned out. You know, he had Floyd Patterson, and Floyd Patterson was a problem, too. And it was he, Cust Amato, that took him out of, a, I think, a Williamsburg section in in New York, and he too was running around with bad company, turned him into a, it, there was something about Castiamato that, that immediately gripped you. And uh, he, 
man wound up with two world champions. Third round, uh, Tyson's trainer Kevin Rooney in his corner before the round began. Just tell him to go out and have some fun. See what I enjoy about this, it's not patty cake, patty cake. No, it really isn't. Boy, what a great thing it would be for Chicago to have him come here and fight when something was on the line. Oh. Well, I know, I know the uh, the next fight is not coming here. It's scheduled for January when he fights Larry Holmes. Yeah, that's in Atlantic City. And then uh, he's talking about making a trip to Japan. He wants to be known as a true world champion, and he's not afraid to go outside the U.S. and fight in some exotic places. Same thing that Muhammad Ali did. Hung his title on the line in many foreign countries. Manila, Zaire, there were so many oh. places that the Ali traveled to. And that's partially why he was such a beloved character. Yeah, and he had he had a he had a charisma that everybody loved. I, you know, I mean, still today you hear that chant. Ali, Ali, <laughs> you know. You see how big those gloves are? Oh, and this, I spoke at the wrong because <laughs> you got a Tyson hit him with the left hook. Tillis getting off a few punches too. Yes. They may be 16 ounce gloves, but they'll sting you. If I were James Quick Tillis, I don't know if I'd want to hit Mike too hard. You know, you wouldn't want to. No, I think stir I, him up. On the other hand, I think that Tyson would insist throw your best punches at me. That's how you get in condition. That's how a fighter really gets in the condition. Well, January 22nd is not that far off. Just over two months away. Uh, between you and I, I'm not too enthused about uh, Holmes coming back. 22 fights. I don't know. You know. From what I've seen of Mike Tyson, I can't see Larry at 38 no. having much of a chance against him. Now you notice how he's been avoiding and getting underneath the left hand of, of Tillis. Well, Tyson has proven that he's so cool. Another good play. The, le yeah. the left hand caught Tillis pretty flush there on the headgear. They're not playing around, Dan. He's not a big person. He can oh. help him outside, though, and he's devastating inside. I can recall Jesse Ferguson going down from an uppercut. It almost took his head off earlier in Tyson's career. And there's a good left hand from Tillis. He reminds me so much of a great fighting champion in the, in the well-away division, Henry Armstrong. We take a look at some of the action there from round three, and again, these two going at each other pretty hard for an exhibition. As you can see. I'll tell you about Kirk Pillis. He was never a quitter. And every fight that I've ever seen him box, and that was many, many, he always gave the best he had. He never, quote, if I may use the term, dogged it. He's in there tonight with the world champion, with Tyson. They're throwing their best punches at each other. And yet you can see the respect that Tyson has for Quick Tillis who now, as we've talked about, has become his chief sparring partner, and I can see why. That's the kind of a guy I'd like to have in a training camp if I had a fighter. Well, Tillis earned it when he fought uh, Tyson. He went, went, he went the distance. He went 10 rounds with him. He's one of only four men ever to do that. Not only that, took his best shots, Dan. He sat down once in the fourth round of that fight, but uh, aside from that, hung in there and slugged it out pretty well with him. Of course, the popular tactic now when fighting Tyson is to grab and hold and smother and cover and try not to let him get off. I'm glad you brought that up because everybody that fights Tyson, they all have the same script writer. I saw something about Tyson that I think <laughs> I, can, I, I can lick him. He does this, he does that. He, he was never in with anybody like, and then you hear the same thing for every fight. Tyson exploding out of that clinch with a couple of good shots to Tillis's body. And what I like about this, 
Again, I keep repeating, they're in there really putting it on. Mike's trying to set up something there. Yes, he is. He tries to get away from the left hand. And over the left hand, he throws a left hook. Get that. Now, Tullis knows about the hook. That's the punch that now knocked him down. That's right. Now they're staying in close. Oh. Great, great prospect when he was boxing here in Chicago. Uh, he has taken a few of Muhammad Ali's moves. That was a good left hook. That's a shot that with lighter gloves and no headgear. Well, then you know what you're running into. <laughs> the shuffle now. Final half minute of this exhibition. It's been fun to watch and while nothing's at stake here. We in Chicago have had the opportunity of seeing the heavyweight champion of the world <laughs> in person. Well, as they finish it up with a flurry, there's a lot to be said for that, Ben, and also, of course, let's not forget the main purpose of all this, and that's the benefit that's Holy the Angel. bottom line, Dan. There's the bell. And that will do it. We'll step aside now for a moment and come back and talk with Mike Tyson. And we return in just a moment. Clements, Mike Tyson, and trainer Kevin Rooney. Mike. First of all, let us thank you very much for coming to Chicago. I know it's tough to break away and do these kinds of things, and we certainly appreciate it. Well, again, it's always my pleasure to do something for Father Clement, and I felt good. I needed to work anyway, so it didn't hurt me by any means. And I like to dedicate everything to Father Clement for helping me. And the winner of this fight at the church, Holy Angel. Well, right. thank you very much. We certainly appreciate it. Tell us a little bit about what's happening next. You have uh, Larry Holmes coming up in January. How do you feel about that one at this point? I'm very um, secure and confident about when the fight is over with, I'll still be victorious. I'll be the heavyweight champion of the world. Ben? Uh, mm, Dan, I've got to ask Mike one question. Here we are. Father Clements, Don King, Mike Tyson, the heavyweight champion of the world, his manager, Jim Jacobs, Mike. Do you think we can see you hanging your title on the line here in Chicago, boxing for the heavyweight championship of the world? Me and my, manage me and my managers, we make situations on defending the title here, but still we have a whole great deal of negotiation going on. And as far as I'm concerned, I would love to defend my, this, my this title in Chicago. Thank you. Go ahead, Dan. All right, Mike, we'll let you get back. Uh, thank you very much again for coming out. We certainly thank appreciate you. it. Thank you. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Kevin? Thank you. All right. We've got more boxing ahead, yet Craig Bojanowski is still to come, so stay right here. <laughs>